Today we're going to talk about numerical solutions. So what we'll do to start is I'm just going to go through the general approach that you're going to take if you're going to solve a problem numerically. We'll contrast the analytical and numerical, and then we'll just jump into an example and, and see how to do it. So analytical models are what we've done so far. Right? The analytical models are exact. They're computationally uh, fast, um, meaning it's you sort of make one evaluation of the equation. So if you plug that into a computer, it's just trivial. You just do it immediately. But the solution itself is really just limited to the specific situation that you have. Right? It's inflexible, meaning you start introducing things like, uh, well, you did, you did look at variable uh, conductivity that varies, varies with temperature, and that you can see how that became a little difficult. If you make that equation, the conductivity equation, even more complex, um, it may just be that there's no analytical solution available. Right, so you're really limited to the to the um, to the things that you can solve analytically when you're uh, formulating a model that way. Uh, numerical model, on the other hand, is an approximate solution. So always remember this, right? A numerical model, like a resistance model in most cases, is an approximate uh, solution. However, um, it's very flexible. So I could have conductivity as a function of temperature. I could have areas changing. I could have uh, you know, generation that's uh, not constant. You can have a very complex problem. And you end up just modeling it with a simple set of algebraic equations, right? The trade-off is that it, takes, it can take a long time to solve. So instead of solving one equation once, you're solving n equations, and you're doing it iteratively, right? So this is where having uh, computer tools becomes really helpful. So far, you might think computer, the computer tools we're using are just standing in your way. Right. Now we're going to actually use them to, to make progress. Um, so the steps that are required to generate a numerical model. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find min, define many, many meaning n nodes. And we'll talk about what, what that means to have many nodes. Uh, basically, it just means you need enough. Right? You need enough so that your, your answer stops changing. So you're going to define uh, some number of nodes. Then you're going to carry out an energy balance on the control volume that's placed around each node. Uh, you have what we'll call internal nodes that are nodes that are completely contained within the mesh that you create. And then you have external nodes, and those are the ones that are bounding the problem. They're interfacing with the surroundings. Third, you're going to approximate each energy term with a rate equation. Um, and then once you've done steps one through three, that leads to a set of n algebraic equations and n unknown, unknown temperatures. Right? And this, is, this part here is, is really important. We have algebraic equations here. Right? So we're not doing calculus. If you don't like calculus, if what we've done so far has annoyed you, uh, this is good. Right? So we're going to move to algebraic equations that you can um, solve, uh, formulate in terms of like thermal resistances. And then solve that set of equations. And if you do it the right way, you actually get back the exact same answer as you would with an anal analytical solution with, within some tolerance. All right, so um, when we say n nodes, like I said, you want to have enough nodes so that your solution is, say, stable. Like it, it stops changing. And what that, what that means is okay, so I have something that I'm trying to model, so call that important thing. Right, so I have some important thing, and maybe that's like the temperature in a certain node, or maybe it's heat transfer across the device, or whatever it may be. Right, so you have this thing you're measuring, and it could, it could change based on the problem. Right? And then you have the number of nodes that you're including in your, in your mesh. So as you, if you were to model this thing with one node, you're basically doing a resistance approximation across the entire device. And depending on your problem, that may be good or not. Uh, typically, as you go to more complex problems, you're going to need to add more nodes to capture the, the little variations that occur throughout the problem. Eventually, you're going to add enough nodes where the answer stops changing. right? And so you always want to, um, you're going to start with some guess of how many nodes you need. Maybe it's 11 or 100 or something like that. And then eventually, you will uh, test that assumption. Right? You have to go back, change the number of nodes, and see uh, whether your solution is, in fact, the correct one or the, the stable one. OK, so once you've verified that your model's converged, then you have to make sure your model makes sense. Don't just take the answer, because a lot of times you're going to look at it, and it'll give you an answer. 
but it's not meaningful. It's it, you have infinity somewhere. Or there's uh, no change in temperature or something like that, right? Make sure it makes sense. You always have to use your engineering judgment on that. Last is compare the numerical solution to an analytical solution. Okay, so what I'm telling you here, which is slightly annoying, is that you're going to go through the whole trouble of doing a numerical formulation, and then I'm telling you to also do an analytical formulation, right? Which is kind of like, why? So the, the point here is numerical models are really good at giving you an answer. They're not always good at giving you the right answer. So you need to make sure that when you formulated the, your, your numerical solution that you have a sanity check on it. Right? You have some way of comparing apples to apples the result. So what you would do is you'd take your complex problem that's got a lot of stuff going on, simplify it down just as much as you need to so that an analytical solution exists for that problem, and then do a direct c comparison of those two. Then you go back and add in your complexity again. Right? So that you've made sure that you just haven't messed up like areas or conductivity or a minus or plus sign somewhere, right? That's just a, a really important check that helps you, uh, yeah, helps, helps you make sure that the solution has good quality.